Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 4. And in this episode of our season, as Brandon fucking Jones, we're going to be completing race 32, which is the Desert Diamond West Valley Casino 200 at ISM Raceway, or as it is now known, Phoenix Raceway, and previously known as Phoenix Raceway. I don't know, they back and forth and back and forth. But in the last episode, we raced at Texas, where Christopher Bell won, so now he's locked into the Final Four. And I tried to beat him. I just, I don't know if I had it in me because I dive bomb turn three and then overdrove it completely and he made the crossover. And yeah, I, I must have not had it in me. And there's nothing else I could have done. So, Christopher Bell, Cole Custer are locked in. Then I'm 63 points above the cutoff line. And I don't know if it's possible for someone to gain that many points on me. And even if they did, then there's still have to be someone else winning. So, I guess it's going to be you know, the battle to see who can get to the fourth spot. Chase Briscoe, he's in the good right now. Michael and I can see getting him on points if he does that well in the race. But then Cindric, Al Geyer, Gregson, if they want to take the fourth spot, they've probably got to win. And, of course, Austin Cindric maybe if he gets enough stage points and performs really, really well and all the other guys don't. Christopher Bell's on pole, Cole Custer in third. And these are the guys that are already in. Why? Like, why do y'all need to do well now? Uh, Chase Briscoe, fourth. So... He's trying to do good, so I, that's nice to see him up here. Austin Zendrick, No Gregson, Michael Annette, and then I'm going to be starting in 20th, unless someone gets into the back. There's one other driver, uh, Justin Allgaier, and he's starting 13th. So that's all that. I don't think I need to see y'all need to see the qualifying lap, considering the fact that like my race doesn't matter whatsoever. These guys and their glasses looking at me. So you see right there I have it on like plus two loose because my car is really tight this track. I think I could put on plus three loose and it would still be really freaking loose. No, Cole Custer got sent to the back. And Justin Allgaier missed the driver's meeting. So Cole Custer, that's not a concern. But Justin Allgaier, yes. So Justin Allgaier, there is no way you're winning this race or, or getting enough points to make it up there. So sad to see it in that way. It already qualified the worst of all the drivers that are trying to get into the Final Four right now. I just drove down to this Josh Williams. Yeah, in 36th part. Whoopsie daisy. Tap the brakes. Hold the bottom. I'm trying to hold the bottom, but also not be on the throttle too long. That will get me tight. Try to keep up with these guys. Let's see if I can dive underneath Tommy Joe Martins here. I tried. It's just hard to get the right angle. So holding up the bottom lane behind me. I never feel like I actually have enough straightaway speed this track or enough grip. If I have a really great setup for Phoenix, then I think I'd stand a really good fighting chance. But I don't even feel like I have that good of a car on fresh tires never come to race here. So I don't, I don't know how what if racing does his career move. But it looks like he has it on the with my tire settings to the AI where it's um, it's more wear, so at first you don't notice that you're, they start wearing out, but then later on the run they really start slowing down a bunch. And I think that's what he did, because I watched him race his career mode in the Cup Series recently, and that's kind of what happened. Well, I'm running 17, kind of hold my own. Don't expect you for much longer, because the way the tire always comes out, like I said. No, 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 fuck you. Okay, well that's the end of the first stage. I'm trying and trying to block and block because I don't have any actual corner speed. I've got fine straightaway speed, but that's all I've got right there. So we're going to go into the next stage, and I'm going to lose even more positions. Maybe I can, like, dive bomb turn one past a bunch of people. So why do I need to? I just want to do good in the race. Because we're, we're here. We're going to just skip the race. Yeah, you can't even do that. You cannot skip races this game. I don't know why. But four games into this NASCAR Heat Series, and you can't skip a race. Well, there's Christopher Bell still leading this thing. Just showing people that he deserves to be here. There's Ross Chastain, the guy that got by me. So, coming from the start on the outside again. It's actually getting later into the day, but I think it still looks quite similar to what I have for my face cam. Let's not drive down into it. We got a good run for the start. Send it in there, underneath Justin Haley. Okay, I gave a push to Matt Mills, and I'm still getting tight. And, of course, Ross Chastain has to pass me. And then this guy has to pass me, too. 
and we just hit the brakes really, really early, and back down to the bottom, and in the end, we're still 18th. I can't get shit out of this. Looks like their tire wear is starting to come on because we're starting to make some passes back in positions I wasn't able to get into previously. But now we only got two laps left in the stage, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to really do that much. But let's do what we can, while we can, get some track position and try to keep it once the green flag comes back to the final stage. Chris Rebell is still leading this thing, no problemo. So... Chase Briscoe is probably still running well and getting in on points, I suppose. No, no, no. It's like, game, decide. Do I have good tires or do I not have good tires? Like, if some people are, are trying to pass me back and then all these guys are falling back and I'm moving forward. Freaking Justin Haley and Ross Chastain, they're both pretty good Xfinity Series drivers, aren't they? Okay, so it's final lap of the stage and we're going to pass John Hermimacek and get into 13th. There's no Gregson running 12th. So yeah, I don't see a driver like him getting up front unless something really freaking stupid happens. And then some guys fall back and he goes forward. But 13th. So I definitely move forward in there, and that's what you get with their tires wearing down at the end of the run. I need to drink some water. I actually just woke up. I woke up, stared at my phone a little bit, and, you know, set up the, uh, the Martinsville... The, Martinsville uh, 250 race I'm trying to hold on May 9th on my phone for like 30 minutes. We'll get our four tires and uh, we'll get one can of fuel. will be enough to make it to the end of the race. No damage to repair. I'm surprised there's no damage to repair with all the cars been rubbing up against here and there. I gained a spot. See, that puts me a row ahead, but I'm on the outside. But being on the outside has been a problem at all during this race. I don't mind. But yeah, I'm planning on holding this uh, NASCAR Heat 4 Martinsville 250 night race with like a $250 grand prize. I want to broadcast on the channel, but I don't know if I have like the connection to do that shit. So it probably just be like recorded and then edit all the, the different views together and make it this like this great footage race for everyone to watch. But I mean, you can actually go to the real Martinsville night race. So what better thing to do than hold a race for myself to watch and uh, add together and create this awesome work of art. And then whoever wins it uh, gets a grand prize. Then I get like second and third, you get like fifty and twenty-five dollars for their efforts because it's gonna be like uh, two times wear, no cautions, just a full green flag run, and some I guess have damage on. So that you know there, there's some cost to not racing cleanly. This that's one of the best parts about Martinsville and Bristol, the damage the cars get. Look, look what I have to deal with. The green flag is out. I, I race the best I can. I can't keep up. Uh, ow. Yeah, no Gregson. He's got to knock me out of the way. Look how slow I am, though. Like, I've just been slowing all these guys down behind me. And then the rest of the field is all the way over there, coming out of turn two right now. And I'm, I'm still so damn slow. It's, it's just viciously slow, and I don't understand why. Like, is this car just that bad? Like, why do I have to have such a bad car compared to my opponents in all these NASCAR E games? Here we go for a pass on Justin Haley, finally. And I'm doing what I have to do to, to do it, but then here comes Justin Allgaier around me. And someone is blowing up down the back stretch. There's Justin Allgaier reacting to it, and Cole Custer. That is Ray Black Jr. I made Justin Allgaier stay behind him, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get the spot you wanna get. See, Cole Custer and Justin Algar, these are the guys that had to start all the way at the back because, like, engine changes and, you know, well, Justin Algar, he missed the, he missed the driver's meeting or whatever. But he's trying to get to the field and then I'm pushing him behind freaking people blowing up. But in the end, what difference does it make? You're not going to win the race because they ain't throwing caution for the guy blowing up. Man, maybe I could help out Justin Algar would have crashed into that guy and then go on to win the race. But nope. He, he decided to slow down and just sit behind him. So, we're down to the last couple laps of the race, and I'm trying to get back to Cole Custer, but he, he just freaking took off once he got around me. That's how freaking slow I am. I'm so slow that once they get around me, they can actually go fast again. Cole Custer is trying to get around 10 car of Elliot Sadler. I don't know about getting to Elliot Sadler either at this point, because it's just, it took me so long to get 
back past Justin Allgaier and Justin Haley. Tires are wearing down. Makes the car a bit looser. Oh, we're closing in. We're closing in fast. Get 11th place. Yeah, we got the run down the back straightaway. We're going to finish 11th in this race. Let's just not overshoot this corner right here. Okay, kind of throwing a block to make sure I have this position confirmed. And Chris Rebell goes back to back. He finally won a race this season at Texas, and they went on in the very following race. So maybe he can go three in a row and win the championship title in the Xfinity Series. He dominated that race. He got his second win of the season, and he's been consistent all season long, so he definitely deserves to be in the Final Four. Alongside Chase Briscoe, who he did really well all race long, and he finished uh, the best out of all the guys that aren't locked in to the next race. And then you've got Cole Cusser, of course, finishes in 10th with me in 11th, so I'm, I'm guessing that is the Final Four. And that was correct, but I don't know why it's in this order, because it's like, it's not based off playoff points in order, it's not alphabetical, it's just kind of random. And then you look right here, and it doesn't make a difference, unless it's, is it based off of what position they would be in if we weren't in the playoff with all the, these 4,000s right here? I'm so damn confused. This game's dumb with the way it counts shit. But I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Ford Eco Boost 300 at Homestead Miami Speedway, where I will try to win the Xfinity Series title with NASCAR legend Brandon fucking Jones. You know it. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.